We now want to see how we can deal with network flows as LP problems. Okay, So here is my network that I'm going to work with. And let's say we want to formulate finding the maximum flow from S to T as a linear programming problem. Now, this situation is different to finding the shortest path and longest path, because no longer um, do I just have to have a flow going from S to A or from S to B. I could have some going along S to A and a sum along S to B. So the variables no longer represent indicator variables. So they're no longer zeros and ones. So actually, what they will represent is the flow going along that edge or that arc. Okay. Now, clearly, uh, although I haven't put arrows on this, this is a directed network um, where S to A is the only route, not A to S, and S to B is the only route, not B to S, because S is going to be my source. So from S, T is going to be my sink to T. But, so, you know, if you, could, if you want, I could put the arrows on. Uh, but I'm leaving A, B, and B, A undirected. Okay. So, first of all, how do I deal with this? if I'm not using indicator variables? Well, first of all, we want to maximize. And we're going to maximize. And the way that you can do this is one of two ways. You can either look at the flow going out of S or the flow going into T. So you can maximize either of those. And that's perfectly fine. So you can either maximize SA plus SB or you can maximize AT plus BT. It doesn't matter which. Okay, you can have either. Now notice how in um, what is different to the shortest path and longest path is I don't have the weight times by SA. Because remember, SA is not an indicator variable here. I'm not writing 8SA. Um, SA is going to represent the flow that I'm allowed to actually go along that edge. Okay, but I will have to have a constraint saying that I can't have it more than 8. OK, so that is the objective function. It's a lot shorter than shortest path and longest path. So subject to. So what constraints am I going to need? Well, what I need is that all of the flow going into a vertex will equal the flow going out of the vertex. So I need uh, a constraint for A and B. Now, I don't need to have one for S because all the flow is going out of S anyway. So there's no flow going in. So it is subject to one constraint for A. So SA plus BA. So they're the possible flows going into A. And the possible flows going out are AB and AT. And that's got to be equal to zero. Because the flow in, take away the flow out, has got to be equal to zero. The flow in has got to equal the flow out. Then we want one for B. So SB plus AB. So there the flow is going in. Take away the flow is going out. BA and BT. That's got to be equal to zero. Right. Now, I need some constraints to explain uh, the actual lengths, uh, my actual arc, so the, the capacities, rather. So I need to say that SA is less than or equal to 8. So max is out at 8. SB is less than or equal to 5. AB is less than or equal to 7. And BA is less than or equal to 7. AT is less than or equal to 10. And BT is less than or equal to 16. OK? And so that is my linear programming problem. OK? I've typed that into Lindo, and it should solve the problem for me. 
Okay, so actually, with a network flow problem, it's not really that bad. If anything, it may well even be easier uh, to work with than the two previous linear LP solvers that we've dealt with.